We start with a routine craniolateral approach to the hip. After incising the skin, we're going to come through the thick fatty subcutaneous layer. And here we are now incising through the superficial fascia lata. and some interposing fat. Next to the caudal border of the tensor, we make a little snip into the deep leaf of the fascia and separate the tensor from the superficial gluteal. going to retract the tensor cranially and then retract both the superficial and middle gluteals to reveal the deep gluteal. So the deep gluteal tenotomy is made. This is an L-shaped incision into the tendon of the deep gluteal. First a transverse incision and then we're going to come up parallel with the fibres of the muscle heading dorsally. Yeah. The deep gluteal muscle is then flap is then reflected cranially and retracted dorsally and retracted with a miting retractor. Next we have our incision into the joint capsule. Uh, this incision is combined with Sorry. takedown of the vastus. Another perpendicular incision is made in the joint capsule dorsally. And now we're freeing up the joint capsule from the craniomedial aspect of the femoral neck. We're now ready to luxate the joint with a hat spoon. Here, in the severely dysplastic hip, no round ligament is present. External rotation of the limb will facilitate the luxation. This is the position at which the femoral head and neck resection will be performed. So we have a large blunt homen in under the head and neck. We have a miting retractor pulling ventrally or distally the craniomedial aspect of the femur, proximal femur. The region of the osteotomy is located uh, with the assistance of the template. And the osteotomy is made with a sagittal saw. Care must be taken to angulate the saw in the appropriate plane. And then the femoral head and neck is detached from the rest of the joint capsule by sharp dissection. We are now ready for the acetabular exposure. Miting retractors are placed both cranially and caudally, as well as dorsally. Soft tissues are typically required to be resected, particularly ventrally. Osteophytes are palpated for, and the dorsal margin, the caudal margin, and the cranial margin as well as the ventral aspect of the acetabulum is identified. Now we're ready to ream, uh, ensuring that the rema stays central and we don't drift too dorsally, which is the tendency. We're going to progressively increase in the size of the remas.
and check that we are at the appropriate levels within the acetabulum. This is the finisher rema. Again, we're going to ensure that we come in the same orientation with each size. So we're ready to place our cementless cup. And this is impacted securely into the preparation bed. Position of the cup is checked. Check for inclination, cup closure, closing angle, as well as version. The cup is palpated for stability within the acetabular bed as well. And we are now ready for our femoral preparation. So the leg is rotated 90 degrees. Homin, blood homin is positioned under the femur. And the ostectomy surface is carefully exposed. The entry point to the femoral canal prep is first made with a Steinman pin in the intertrochanteric fossa. And this entry point is sequentially enlarged, first with drill bits. And reamers. And then we're now ready to start hand broaching. So the brooch is carefully oriented uh, and impacted into the proximal metaphysis. point we are now ready to insert our final stem. Stem is initially seated by hand. And then impacted into place. The trial head is applied. And a reduction is performed. No, you don't have to pull hard, okay? Just from down there. Yeah. And based on the degree of tension, okay. during this reduction, the final head size is chosen. And the head is applied to the neck of the stem and reduction is performed. So we have a Voltman retractor in the region of the trochanter, a Homan retractor caudal to the acetabulum, levering it into place while traction is applied to the limb. Positioning is checked, uh, particularly in extension and external rotation. Tension is checked by placing traction on the femur. Mm -hmm. yeah. Site is swabbed for bacterial culture. 
and the site is closed. Start with closure uh, of the joint capsule. with one to two interrupted cruise ship sutures. Yeah. Then the deep gluteal is reattached to the trochanter. Raise the leg slightly more, Alberto. Raise the leg slightly more. Can you raise the leg slightly more? Here, a, a modified sort of triple cruciate suture pattern is applied, and then this suture is protected with a horizontal mattress pattern. The vastus is sutured up to the deep gluteal muscle. And then the fascia is closed. Here the subcutaneous layer is opposed. And here an intradermal pattern is used as a final layer.